Hello, everybody. Happy whatever day you decide to watch this video. Today is Sunday, and I have been wanting to make this video throughout the week because I feel like I've been rediscovering my love for metal music, and I just really wanted to make a video and talk about it because I freaking love that type of music. And to help better understand how I got into it, I will go through my history and I feel like this video might end up being partially about World of Warcraft because that was basically my dad is calling me. I've been trying to record this for a while. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, <laughs> let me resume what I was talking about. At the end of season two in World of Warcraft, this is during Burning Crusade time. So I'm checking the dates. Season two was between June 20th, 2007 until November 26th, 2007. So. It was definitely very, very late in the season. I remember exactly. I was wearing Primal Moon Cloth gear, which was a set that you crafted from tailoring that was actually pretty good. So I had that, but obviously it's kind of not so great in PvP because by then Resilience was already out and that was a stat that was extremely important to reduce damage taken. So it is really hard to play PvP without the proper gear, but you have to start somewhere, right? So I started watching a ton of videos, so many videos around priests, but actually I really enjoy just watching other classes too. So for example, some of the main ones that I remember from back then distinctly is Saru and Tharbad. That one was a frost mage, two frost mages, and it was really cool to see unorthodox compositions like that because after a while, I feel like after the beginning days of WoW, all you ever saw was healer DPS, except for those unique people that were really skilled at their class and they knew how to coordinate their cooldowns and communicate with their partner well to know how to punish the enemy for their mistakes. Double DPS is a really rough comp to play because once you blow through all your cooldowns and once you are out of gas, essentially, it's really hard to win after that point. If your opponents are very difficult, it can be very hard to play against. Saru and Darbad was actually the first WoW PvP video that I remember and really loved. I'm pretty sure I didn't hear about my next one, Vertney, without my friend from school. He was someone that I was in high school with. We were in the same classes together and we ended up playing WoW together for a while and he was a really cool guy. But he introduced me to Brittany and Drake Dog. So Drake Dog is a destruction warlock from Korea. He made a lot of videos. Brittany is a mage from Sweden and he kind of became somewhat famous back then because people loved his videos. And all of these videos that I'm mentioning, they all feature a lot of metal music and rock. But the thing is, I'm not extremely familiar with genre, especially the specific kind. So I will just say metal and I'll just say rock, but I'm sure some of them kind of blend in together with each other. I think in particular, I prefer Swedish melodic death metal. I think that's what it's called, or metalcore. I have no idea. There's just so many different phrases people use when they're trying to label a band. Most of my favorite metal bands tend to be from Sweden, so I would assume most of them kind of fall into that melodic death metal genre. But I do like my fair share of rock that can sound more casual, or maybe some of the rock bands that I like might sound more metal as well. It's really hard for me to know specifically whether they're actually a rock band or if they're rock that adds in some screaming. I will, I guess, talk about the bands that I like. So here I have my list because I am prepared and ready and I don't want to forget anything. And I think after I talk about these, I will include some clips of the videos that I mentioned because it'll give you guys a chance to hear the kind of songs that I like and I can maybe also talk about what specifically about the video is nostalgic for me because when you watch these older videos, these videos are from a long as time ago. 2007, 2008, basically all generally around that time. So that is more than 10 years ago and WoW has changed so much since then in a bad way. So when you see all the old stuff 
you just miss it <laughs> and you remember the good old days. First off, we have Adept. I don't remember exactly where I heard of Adept from, but they're a band that I started listening to later on, so past college years. I'd say the period where I listened to the most metal in terms of the dominant genre, high school, and then all throughout college, I'd say, because that time period, I feel like I was not entirely happy. I was an angry teenager because I was constantly clashing with my parents about gaming. They would really try hard to prevent me from playing. They would take away my ethernet cable. They would impose a time limit on our internet. So for example, if 10 p.m. rolls around, they would have it automatically disconnect. I think there was a setting that you were able to do for that. So that pissed me off a lot. And even if I did all of the stuff that they would require, like practicing my instruments or doing all my homework, they would still not let me play. We would always have fights about these things. I remember there would be times where I was playing and they would just want me to get off without good reason. So I would be confrontational. I would be angry. I would be talking back to them. And sometimes I would even curse at them. So that whole period, we were not getting along at all. I felt like as a teenager, I really hated my parents. I had a lot of anger towards them. So during that time, I was constantly thinking that once I'm an adult, I'm just going to cut off my parents because I hate them. They're doing things for terrible reasons. They're keeping me away from a hobby I love. So metal probably suited me very well during that period because even now, I like to listen to metal if I'm unhappy. If I'm angry, I feel like it energizes me or it kind of nurtures my anger. And I actually feel a little emotional talking about this because it was tough. Like I loved playing WoW. I, even now as an adult, when I watch some of these older videos, these videos are actually ones that obviously came out before I was even playing that seriously because I watched them to learn. So. When I watch these videos, I always feel like I missed out because I wished I was able to play WoW more during that period of time at the very beginning. I feel like I missed out on raiding. I missed out on so much because of my age, starting later, and because of my parents not letting me play that much. That's basically why I turned to metal music and watching those PV videos, I really, really started enjoying that music, so it became the dominant genre that I would listen to. <laughs> After that explanation, let's continue down the list. Atreyu. So Atreyu is a band that I definitely learned about because of Bertney. He featured their songs a lot in his videos, and their older songs are freaking amazing. I still love to listen to them constantly, and they actually had an album that just came out recently. So the problem with a lot of these bands is people that say they're fans of these bands, they start complaining, saying that these bands are starting to sound softer or they're conforming, trying to be more radio acceptable, stuff like that. And I can kind of understand that argument because I would say that I have stopped listening to a few bands because their sound is just a little different. and. Their songs don't end up appealing to me anymore, but I don't really analyze why that is. I've never been a super in-depth music listener, not entirely. For example, lyrics, I don't pay attention to that much, but for specific songs, when I do end up listening to the lyrics and then I realize I actually enjoy them, then that's a little different. But I'd say dominantly for me, my enjoyment for music is just the way it sounds. So if it has a cool beat, and a shitty lyric, I might still listen to it because of the beat. So for example, this is a completely different genre, but I've talked about this song with Shane before. It's called Plain Jane, it's by ASAP Ferg, and it has a catchy beat, but during the chorus, he constantly says, suck a n dick or something, and he says that like five times. 
So whenever that portion comes on, I just can't take that song seriously because those lyrics are so ridiculous to listen to repetitively. A song like that, I don't add that to my library because of what I said, but at least for metal and for rock, the good thing is I don't tend to have to worry about stuff like that because I don't feel like they have ridiculous lyrics like that. Rap is a completely different story. The main reason I do enjoy metal music or rock music is I love the instrumentals and sometimes when they go hard and when they're screaming, I just think it sounds so awesome. So Atreyu is actually, I would say, definitely up there for one of my favorites out of all of the ones I listen to. And it's mainly because of their older songs, for sure. Avenged Sevenfold. Avenged Sevenfold is one that I feel like... I do like some of their songs. I have several of their songs added to my library. But I actually feel like they're slightly softer than I like because I have noticed that whenever their songs come on, I just skip it automatically. And I do have a really bad habit of doing that, though. I would say that I get trigger happy, so I tend to just skip, 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 skip. And I think that's just a bad habit. I should let the song play out for a while and then it would allow me to remember why I added that song to my library in the first place. Oh, and another thing, I will add my Spotify playlist to the information box because I like to share. So if you want to see what my metal rock playlist looks like, you can check it out. So next, is Breaking Benjamin. Another thing about me that you should know by now is that I do not pay attention to what the general public says about bands. You know how people bitch about stuff a lot? So I feel like Breaking Benjamin tends to be a band that is brought up a lot when people talk about an example of what a band shouldn't be like. So for a lot of these metal bands, whenever I look at their YouTube videos, a lot of the times the comments would be like, oh, this sounds like Breaking Benjamin. And they mean it in a negative way because apparently to them, some people just think Breaking Benjamin is too radio friendly or it's just pussy rock. I don't really know, but I actually enjoy Breaking Benjamin a fair amount. I don't really care that people say this stuff because I have realized similar to other things in life, I will like what I like and I don't really care about other people's opinions on it. So even though Breaking Benjamin tends to be a band that people shit on or they say bad things about, I like their music and they have constantly released albums that might sound the same, sure, but I find them catchy enough that I'll still add them, it's fine. But I will definitely say that I think the first song that I learned about from them was Diary of Jane. And that was a song that was in Drake Dog's video, The Korean Warlock. Definitely a lot of my music stems from those videos. Next up, I have Dead by April. I don't remember where Dead by April came from, but Dead by April, I will say, feels more of... I feel weird to say pop, but their songs are metal-ish, but they have a fair amount of clean vocal portions. I'd say in the past, when I was a teenager, I mainly listened to music that did not have many clean vocals, but Dead by April tends to be that metal band that I, I tend to like because with most of my normal metal music, I can't sing along to that, right? They're growling, they're screaming, their voices are super deep. I can't do any of that, and I wouldn't even want to try to do that because that would be so stressful if I were trying to sing along to a metal song and I'm just sitting here like growling and trying to like do stuff like that. So Dead by April tends to be the metal band that I can actually sing along to pretty well. I actually really like to sing. I do it a lot, I'd say. Most of the time that I'm listening to music, if it's a song that I can sing along to, I will do that. So in my car, I'm always singing, I'm always listening to music. So music is actually something that I usually always have on. I rarely have a moment where I have it silent in my house, unless I've been listening to too much music for a while and I'll just have a moment of silence. But just in general, I really always have music playing. It always seems to enhance the atmosphere for me. Yeah, Dead by April. Actually a band that I would say I would have 
quite up there because even though they sound more not as hardcore as the other metal bands that I am familiar with, I like the ability to be able to sing along to their songs. Next up is Disarmonia Mundi. This band is not together anymore, but they had a few good songs back then and also came from WoW PvP videos. Disturbed. I know many people have heard of Disturbed. They've been around for ages. They just put out a new album. Disturbed, I think I would put them not super high up there. I would put them slightly below, but I definitely still enjoy their music. They're just not one of my favorites. Next up is Escape the Fate. So Escape the Fate was a band that I listened to many years ago, but then they had some drama, I feel like, where their lead singer went to jail for something. And whenever they have major changes like that, where at least lead singers, they're actually still reasonably important to me in a band because they're the voice you're listening to a lot, right? So I'll talk about it for another band, but whenever they have major changes in the lineup for the band, then it becomes kind of hard to continue listening to them, at least for me. I did actually hear one of their singles from last year that I thought was decent, but generally I only have a few songs of theirs from the very beginning, but not so much anymore. Five Finger Death Punch, I don't know that much about them, but I tend to view them as being similar to Avenged Sevenfold, but maybe I am entirely wrong, but Five Finger Death Punch is not a band that I overly focus on. I do like some of their songs. They have humorous songs, like I think they have a song called, they just have this one song where the chorus goes burn, motherfucker burn, motherfucker burn. And I, I like I like stuff like that. <laughs> I like hearing cursing like that in songs. So there's someone that I listen to. I don't know if they have anything recent. I tend to, I would say the past few years I have definitely fallen off on keeping up with a lot of these bands, but only recently have I started to put more of an effort into listening to some of their stuff. So for example, recently I posted on my Instagram stories that I was listening to Soilworks' new album. Uh, Atreyu also had a new album I talked about earlier and I'm really glad I listened to that because I really like it but for a lot of these other bands I have kind of been not keeping track so I'm sure they have released stuff recently I just need to spend some time to listen to the album and catch up Okay, next I will talk about In Flames which was my favorite band for sure so they were my favorite band for many 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 years and they are also the only band I have ever seen perform live. I don't go to see performances very often and the main reason that I don't anymore is because I realized after seeing them twice that I just don't think I really enjoy the whole crowd thing. So yeah, I've seen them twice live. Uh, one time was in New York, another time was in New Jersey and I think I realized when I went to see them live that I really enjoy just listening to the studio version instead of live where they add their own spin to things and I think that's why a lot of people like seeing them live but I just realized that seeing the band live wasn't as exciting as I thought it would be. At least just for me personally, I started realizing that the music they were putting out wasn't appealing to me anymore. And it was kind of saddening because I realized when I was just looking them up recently, it's been seven, six to seven years since I've seriously listened to them in terms of new content because I remember the last album that they released was called Sounds of a Playground Fading and that was the album that I went to see their performance and that was 2011, I believe. So it's been a really long time and I feel like during those years I've basically forgotten all about them. I've kind of neglected them entirely but I actually, I loved a lot of their older songs. I have like 70 of their songs in my library so I, I love this band, their old stuff but nowadays I just don't listen to them anymore so it kind of makes me sad. I mean I have an In Flames t-shirt and they just 
They're featured a fair amount in a lot of the WoW PvP videos as well, so they were a groundbreaking band, I would say, for the Swedish metal scene because they started a long ass time ago, but they've definitely fallen off. Um, next up is Kill Switch Engage. Kill Switch Engage, I would view very similarly to Avenged Sevenfold. They don't feel as hardcore to me. Uh, next is actually Pain. Pain is a band that I think wasn't around for very long and they're also Swedish. I, of course, I love my Swedish bands. Something I just feel like saying about this band is that they have this one album called Dancing with the Dead and that album is not on Spotify and it bugs the crap out of me because I really like that album. For me, I feel like if bands don't have their songs on Spotify, I tend to forget about that music because Spotify, I've been using it for so many years now and I have all of my music there. So if I have to go elsewhere for music, I don't tend to do it as often because it's inconvenient for me and it's not consolidated. I like my stuff consolidated. So this one album, Dancing with the Dead, I have it saved on my YouTube. So once in a while I go to listen to the album there and I really like that album. One of the songs on that album is called Not Afraid to Die and that song is from a Vertney video and it's a great song. I really like that album. So check it out if you're interested. <laughs> Next, Papa Roach. Papa Roach, nothing spectacular, but I enjoy them. They had a, an album come out the past few weeks and that one definitely feels less hard, but I managed to find a few songs off it that I like. That band has also been around forever, so it's also very nostalgic. Slipknot is actually a band that I don't listen to that much. I only have a few songs by them, but the few that I do, I do like a fair amount. They might actually feel too hard for me at times. Maybe it's a specific style that they have that I don't really feel as connected to compared to the Swedish ones. Next up, Soilwork, which I was kind of talking about earlier because they, had a, they have a new album that came out last week and I've been listening to it and I am kind of glad that I'm giving it more chances because the more I'm listening to it, the more I'm realizing that, hey, I like a few songs off this album, so I don't want to just completely dismiss them. Foil Work is actually one of the bands that has been around since like In Flames times. And the thing is, they have actually put out albums rather consistently that I managed to find songs that I like off of it. So I'd say that they've been doing a good job at staying consistent and I really look forward to hearing more of them because they're old school and they still sound awesome. Sonic Syndicate was a band that I learned from Drake Dog and they were awesome. I think they sounded great back then, but I think what happened is they kind of broke apart for a while or they had members leave. So one of the main ones that left was their lead singer, Roland Johansson. And I really liked him. He did the clean vocals for that band and his voice just sounds grand, majestic. I don't know, I really like it. And then later on, I found out he joined another band called The Unguided. And of course, because The Unguided had several other members of Sonic Syndicate in there, I decided to listen to them. And I love a lot of their songs. But really quickly, back to Sonic Syndicate, after he and a few others left, I kind of just stopped listening to them completely. So Sonic Syndicate, I like their maybe first three albums, but after that, I don't really listen to them anymore. Next up is The Stranded. The Stranded is just a very brief period of time, or I only have a few songs from them that I listen to, and they have Disarmonia Moondy members. So some of these bands that fell apart in the past, I would look them up and see if they made a new band. So that is the main reason why I found The Stranded, but I actually have no idea if they released any more. I feel like they kind of didn't because I haven't followed them or known anything about them for a while. I just have songs from, I think, one album by them. Thousand Foot Crutch, um, just a band that I added in. They're more rock related and their song I heard off of a Warrior PvP video that I liked, so I've been adding some songs from them, but I don't have much by them, and they're definitely not metal. 
Next up is Trivium. Trivium is a band I've kind of fallen off of recently. I don't listen to that many of their songs. I have a lot added. I tend to skip them a lot, but I think I shouldn't do that because they're actually not bad at all. They're a band that I discovered after they played before In Flames performed. I realized that day that they're actually pretty good, so after that event and that evening, I went home and looked up their music and started adding their stuff. Back to the Unguided, because that's the next band on my list actually, and I talked about it already because they are former members of Sonic Syndicate, but I actually realized recently, I think it might have been a year or two now maybe, but Roland Johansson left that band also, so I'm just thinking, what the hell, man? This guy joins bands, then he leaves them so quickly. Well, not quickly, because he obviously stays for years, but I just wonder why he doesn't stay long-term or he stays until the entire band falls apart. So it makes me sad that he left. I need to check to see if The Unguided has actually put out any new music recently without him on vocals, but it sucks because I really like his vocals and when they make a change like that. As long as the musical style is the same, I can definitely see myself still listening to them, but I was just disappointed to hear that. <laughs> oh, and the last one is The Used. And The Used had old school songs in the Saruth Arban video that I will show later. And I thought they sounded really awesome. They actually had a new album recently, past few years, I guess is my recently and I haven't listened through it entirely yet, so I would definitely want to, but I do feel like their style definitely is not similar to before because they did a fair amount of screaming before. They felt more like, you know, intense, hardcore, whatever the term is. The few albums by them recently that I've listened to doesn't have that level of screaming and intensity. So it does kind of suck because their old songs were really awesome, but as long as I still can enjoy the band, I don't think it bothers me that much. Those are pretty much mostly all of the bands in my playlist that have multiple songs added. There are probably a few sprinkled in there that were songs I added from PvP videos, but I didn't bother checking out the artists. I originally was thinking about talking through the clips that I'm going to show, but I'm also thinking that's probably not the best idea because if I'm talking, then you can't hear the music, and the main reason I want to show it is because of the music. Hopefully you guys will enjoy the clips that I show, because I want to show the fun gameplay, the awesome nostalgia of everything, and also the awesome music. I do want to reiterate that the music is amazing, and it is so awesome and incredible, so...
has his heart safety pin to his backpack. His backpack is all that he knows. Shot down by strangers whose glances can cripple the heart and devour the soul.